Welcome back. In case you're just joining us, Money Line with Nancy, it is. Joining me right now is my guest, Julie Okadonle, the Director General at NAPTIP. What's NAPTIP? National Agency for the Prohibition of Trafficking in Persons. Welcome, madam, and thanks for joining me on the show. Thank you for having me, Nancy. How are you doing? I'm good, and well done for a very good job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Where do we start from? The business of human trafficking. I, I don't know if you uh, watched my intro. I had to get a lot of data to support what we're talking about because sometimes you may just be talking, talking, talking. People don't understand the extent of the challenge or the problem. Uh, so we had to put that data forward in terms of how much is this uh, business worth, mm -hmm. as it were, how many persons have been trafficked worldwide and all of that. And I realized that this is $150 billion trade yeah. worldwide and nigeria also is a large uh, percentage there talk to me about what you have been through for a long time now in this coming the business of human trafficking well un unfortunately human trafficking has become big business it's a business we're looking at 150 billion and i want to believe it's even more than okay. that um, ILO claims it's the second largest business, but I don't want to believe so. I want to think it's the first because the profits are huge. The demand is really high and the risk is very low, you know. So I believe it's the first. And unfortunately, you know, because of greed on the part of the mm. traffickers, it, it, you know, there's no value for life any longer, you know. You know, the, the moral decadence, you know, I mean, we used to be our brother's keepers before. What's, what has gone wrong? You know, I keep asking myself. You know, and, and so it's, it's, it's really, really sad. Hmm. How sad it is, especially with the recent hue and cry around human trafficking and modern day slavery. When CNN took that report, that had that investigation uh, put together by Nina, uh, she went to Libya. In fact, I saw it that night, and that night I was watching CNN. I was screaming in my house. And you know that when you see Nigerians, you know them, yep. wherever they are. She brought out, to, she brought to fall that this is what is happening. Slave auctions, people are being sold for as much as $400. How much of this recent hue and cry has brought attention to that? As little as $400, Dollars. you mean, not as much, much as $400. Yeah, yeah, Dollars, yes. You know, it's such a shame. You know, um, fortunately, it has received a lot of attention. Um, both internationally and locally. I've had a lot of Nigerians calling me now, private uh, businessmen and women calling me and asking how they can help. Um, fortunately, the federal government too was the first to respond and um, they've come up with a team of um, various agencies who are going to various endemic countries, um, not just international but also west african countries as well to identify the various camps where we have <coughs> stranded nigerians that are willing to come back and there's going to be a massive repatriation of such nigerians and rehabilitation okay what are agencies like yours naptip doing i know nema too but naptip which is your responsibility to to um eliminate trafficking in persons what uh, was your agency doing because before this recent hue and cry, I guess you would have been doing some things, but perhaps not enough also. What do you think? Well, NAPTIP has been doing a lot over the years. Perhaps we've not been making so much noise in the media. And now we've realized the importance to engage with the media because the media should be really our first partners. You know, NAPTIP has really done a lot and we're still doing a lot. We've been doing a lot in the areas of awareness campaign, which is the most important thing because to prevent this crime from happening in the first place is better than trying to cure it, you know, if there's a cure for it, you know what I mean? So, I mean, in terms of that, besides this, I want you to also realize that NAPTIP has also embarked on repatriation exercises in the past. We've gone to African, West African countries, Mali, Gambia, Burkina Faso, to repatriate back our girls and boys who were caught up in the trafficking deal. And the IOM has also been partnering with NAPTIP over the years in bringing back Nigerians. It's been an ongoing exercise. The only difference we're having now is the fact that the federal government has lent its voice and they're going to have many more flights of, you know, coming back, you know, of repatriated Nigerians coming back to the country as against three, four flights that we were having in the previous past. We're going to be having as many as 10, 15 flights because there are so many Nigerians stranded all over the world. How disturbing is human trafficking? Uh, give me instances of 
what human trafficking is about? It's human trafficking is extremely disturbing because it has taken a new dimension. You know, we have the organ harvesting. People go to the black markets to buy organs. Like you know, organs, organs like the liver, liver the kidneys, hearts. the kidneys, the heart. You know, uh, and and it's very expensive. So it's now these traffickers. You know, it's easier for them to just kill someone and take the organs out and sell as against waiting for sexual uh, exploitation. Human trafficking takes the form of sexual exploitation, forced labor, domestic servitude. You have people who are forced to work for no pay. They are also sexually exploited during the period because every money, every pay for them goes to the trafficker. So you see, it's, it has become a trade, you know, an evil business. So many people are profiting from it. You have those who, who are engaged in transporting. The transporters have their own courts. Those they will settle at the various borders have their courts. The law enforcement agents that partner with them have their courts. So it, it's, it's horrible. You know, it's, 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 it's just a huge, ugly business that is going on now all over the world. What is the trajectory of someone being trafficked? Yes, what's the trajectory? Because most of those people that are trafficked do not go through the legal ways, isn't it? What is the trajectory? You know, sometimes it may interest you to know that some people that are trafficked also go through the legal routes. They go through the airports. You know, we are always concentrating on the borders. They also go through the airports. We have a lot of people going to Saudi Arabia now, Oman and Dubai. They go through the airports and they are trafficked. They go for domestic servitude. They are not paid. The agents get the money. These are traffic victims. Now in Nigeria, they go through Niger. They go through the borders. Through Niger, they find themselves in Agadez. Agadez, they find themselves in Tripoli. So that's it. But it's not just, we're just looking at the, the border, borders. We're also, we should also be looking at the airports. They go through the airports. They go through the borders. They go through the sea. You know, so it, it, all, all sorts of means. Those that find themselves around, along the coastal lines, like um, those from Bayelsa State, those in Oran, they go through Oran, you know, through the seas. They go through Bayelsa to Burkina Faso. They go to Mali, Ghana. It's horrible. Sometimes those are the destination countries. Sometimes they proceed from there to yeah. Europe. So what's NAPTI doing at those borders? Uh, those, yes, at those uh, borders leading to the destination Unfortunately, NAPTIP is not at any of these borders. And we are trying to make the federal government understand that NAPTIP has to be in these borders because these are extraordinary situations now. So extraordinary uh, uh, measures must be taken. I mean, yes, the ease of doing business, um, one is, does not expect all the agencies to be to there. Be but there. now this is an abnormal situation. So we have to take abnormal steps. To curb this, you know, because I think that when NAPTIP is at all of these borders, it will reduce this thing drastically. Reason being that NAPTIP operatives have been specially trained to identify potential victims of trafficking and traffickers alike. So it's just our job, and that is our mandate. Hmm. So when a NAPTIP official sees someone that is trafficked, the person actually knows that this oh, person is yes. being trafficked. Straight away, there are indicators. So as soon as you set your eyes on a potential victim of trafficking, of course you'll know. You know, I also do know that there's this transatlantic trade even going on. It may not just be people being trafficked to Italy, through Libya, or through, uh, yes, through Libya to Spain or Italy. You also have that kind of human trafficking trade even around West African countries. Lagos, for example, is a route where people are being trafficked to other uh, African countries. What are you doing about that? Well, you see, the truth is that we work mainly with information. And that mm -hmm. is why we've been carrying out this massive awareness campaign. If you see something, say something. We need this information. People see things. People know that things are happening. But they don't talk. When we get information, we act on those information. That is not to say we don't carry out surveillance exercises. We carry out surveillance exercises as well. And in the process, sometimes we are able to apprehend, you know, uh, 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 um, any acts from occurring. So basically, we do a lot of awareness. Awareness is 
key. Awareness is something that has led to so many arrests. So we expect Nigerians to give information. Tell us what is happening. If you see something unusual around the airport, call NAPTIP. If you see something around the motor parks, the borders, call NAPTIP. We're always there to protect you. That is our function. That is our job. Hmm. Okay, at this point, in case you want to join the conversation, please feel free to do that. Tweet me, Nancy uh, Ilo, on Twitter, Moneyline AIT. Now, let's take this question from Godwin. What is the government doing to curb or stop those intending to embark on this deadly uh, voyage because a large number of our youths have given up on this country? You see, unfortunately, our youths that should be well informed are very ignorant. Because most of them just think that anything outside Nigeria is the best. You can become who you want to be in Nigeria. If Nigeria was that bad, we wouldn't have so many expatriates here. We have a lot of expatriates in Nigeria and they're doing very well. This is where the money is. This is where they come to make the money. And then they go back to their countries to enjoy it. So the youths, the government has put in a lot of programs for the youths. We have you, uh, programs for young entrepreneurs. There are farming programs. There are programs of skill acquisition. There are jobs to be taken on. You know what I mean? There are small loans for youths to take advantage of. And then, you know, they need to come out. They need to, 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 to you know, they can come together and form a consortium Corporate. of youths. Appreciate form an office, get an office and do something useful. But for you to think at the back of your head that when you go abroad, there are jobs, that is not true. Because even those nationals, those citizens of these countries they are referring to, some of them don't have jobs as well. Some of them are at home. So it's time for these youths to begin to think out of the box. I think we need to change our mindset. You know? And even when this... this uh, uh, um, returnees are being repatriated a, a government is also going to embark on like a one week sensitization where we need to reorientate orientate and reorientate the mindset of all these returnees because even if you just bring them back and you try to rehabilitate them but they still have the same mindset it's not going to work mm. so i think our youths now need to you know, a kind of reorientation exercise. You know, that, that brings me to the aspect which I talked about earlier, that uh, if you take a look at it, are all migrants coming out of poverty and are all poor people migrants? Because poverty and unemployment are some of the factors cited for migration, however, whether it's legal or illegal migration. Uh, I was invited to a program on Sunday, last, this last Sunday, to speak uh, to a group of young people on this uh, subject, say no to slavery, you know. And I had some of my panelists, your PR, in fact, Natip, I met him there. And one of my colleagues, Monia Mario, were there educating people. And what actually struck me is that this information could be there, but some young people do not know. So what my question was is, what are our young people listening to? That's it. What are they also watching? And I did mention there on Sunday that you might think that the grass is greener on the other side, but sometimes, or most times, the grass is not greener on the other side. Just like you said, there are a lot of programs, even if we say that we're having a difficult or a challenging economy, there are still a few programs that young people can take advantage of. And I reeled out some of them uh, that day to uh, those that came for the program. And, of course, that's also what I do on the show every day, to tell people you can take advantage of this or whatsoever government policy. I try to break it down for people to understand. Now, the question for you is that some of these uh, people that have been repatriated, because we've seen uh, a lot of returnees in the past few weeks, what is the reintegration program? Because I do know that even when a victim is repatriated or returned, there is a higher tendency of that person to be trafficked again and trafficked again. So what are the reintegration programs? The only reason why a victim of trafficking can be trafficked or retrafficked is if that victim is returned and nothing happens. But there's a new thing going on now. When these victims return, they are rehabilitated and they tell us what they want. Do you want to go back to school? The government sponsors, they go to school. Do you want to start a small business? They set up your business for you. You want to learn some skill government acquisition? Some money. Oh, yes. You want to learn skill acquisition? Government will, will, will train you in the skills you want and give you a starter pack. So that is the difference. It's different when you come back 
and nothing happens and you're left. Because if you're left with nothing, you'll be vulnerable. And you see, the, like I said, Nancy, people die from lack, lack of, of knowledge. knowledge. A lot of people are very ignorant. Our, unfortunately, these youths are better. You ask the question, what do they read? What do they watch? watch yes. Most of them don't even read the papers anymore. If they even watch the TV, they're just watching musicals, dancing, naked videos and all of that. They don't even read information any longer. Definitely, these youths that we are trying to reach, we may not even reach them. So we the may end up that, reaching the old ones. Yeah, so that means perhaps we should also reach them where the target is. Yeah, we go. We, we reach them now on Facebook, social on Twitter, media. through the social media, because that's the only language they understand. So we reach them through the social media as well. We do all of that because those are our targets. And of course, the truth is that most of these victims come from the rural areas. And so we go to the various communities because that's where they bring them from. Most of them have little or no uh, 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 access to the Internet. And that's why they don't even know what is going on. You say um, poverty. Poverty is one of the factors. But the truth is, it's not an excuse. Mm. The major factor is ignorance and lack of knowledge and illiteracy. Because how poor can you be if you're able to raise 500,000 to 1 million, one naira, million naira to give a trafficker to a back on such perilous journey? How poor can you be? So it's not about poverty. Most of these jobs are paid for. I mean, most of these trips are paid for. They are not free. So poverty is out of the question, really. You know, I think it's lack of knowledge, ignorance, and illiteracy. You know, looking at the states that produce the highest number of, um, um, of victims, let me put it that way, and those states seem to be there. People are, uh, are uh, you know, taking from Nigeria and those states to Italy, perhaps for sex trade, forced labor, and all of that. And this new crave of football academy which will come in a bit uh, which we'll uh, uh, talk about in a bit and those states you also have delta states you have um, what's the third one emo states and when i looked at these states i was trying to just oppose how poverty is affecting or is impacting why people leave because of poverty or unemployment if you take a look at the state delta or emo state for example these states are not poor states in nigeria you find the poorest states in the north then you see the number of victims of human trafficking less in the north. So I couldn't just understand why people from those states are the highest victims. You understand what I mean? You know, when you're talking about Edo State, there's a history. In the past, the girls of Edo State were going to Italy for prostitution, and they were thriving in that trade. Unfortunately, human trafficking took over. And so the narratives have changed. So when those girls in Edo State, they keep referring to the former glory of those who had made it and built houses. Little did they realize that the tables had turned. It was now a trafficking thing. And so that was why you had a mass you know, movement from Edo State. Unfortunately, when those ones who now moved later on got trapped up in the trafficking thing, they were made to invite family and friends to Edo under duress by the traffickers themselves. And that is why it appears as if the whole of Edo State is in Italy. That is exactly the story of Edo State. Now, when you want to talk of Imo State, for example, you know, Igbos generally love football. And they can do anything to play this football. They are talented in this game. You know, so unfortunately, people take advantage of them and deceive them with fake uh, football uh, academies, fake clubs to be signed on. They pay so much for this. And then they are trafficked. And when they are trafficked, what happens? Those who are lucky are made to play without pay. As if they are even football that academies is, yeah. in those countries. Yes, those who are lucky are made to pay without uh, play without pay for those local football clubs. Those who are not lucky are used as sex slaves for sexual exploitation. Yes, that's what they use them for. It's really, really sad. What are the efforts that NAPTIP is putting in place, especially to, uh, to bring back uh, our people that are in Libya? Especially, I do know there are detention centers, and I also do know that there are a lot of places that Nigerians are in Libya that are undocumented. Nigeria has, of course, so many undocumented uh, migrants uh, all over the world. What is NAPTIP doing? Right now, we've almost concluded plans to go on a fact-finding mission to not just Libya, Italy, all over the world, 
where we have Nigerians that are stranded to identify the various camps known and unknown and bring back the reports to Nigerian government. From there, we'll now start repatriating them. But right now, what is ongoing is the repatriation exercise from Libya. They're already evacuating and bringing them. How um, many, how many people have been repatriated? Wow. In last week, I know we had 450 in two batches. We had 250 in four batches, you know, in four, four different flights. So thousands, about over 2,000. What are the experiences that do, those returnees tell you? Oh, wow. I know you would have had stories. What are some of the experiences? Wow. Share with you me? don't want to know. They're horrible. The girls are made to sleep with all sorts of animals. Animals? Oh, yes. They are made to sleep with over 20, 30 men a day. Even the boys, too, are raped. So it's not just a girl thing now. Even the boys are raped. They are made to work in farms, forced labor for free, you know, without pay. Of course, the, the, uh, the traffickers get all the monies. They are beaten. They are brutalized. They are raped. All sorts, if I may. In fact, it's, it's really horrible. Coming to the issue of rape or sleeping with men, uh, I saw on television some of the returnees, a, a, a girl, a young girl, that came back with a baby. Yeah. I didn't see the face of the baby. Uh, okay, I saw like a bit of the head of the baby and the hair. And what just came to my mind is, oh, that this girl got pregnant during the trip or her uh, encounter there and gave birth to a baby that, of course, absolutely did not look in Nigeria. You would say that this person is an extraction of those in Libya yeah. and, and all of she that. She is even lucky to have had a baby and come back with her baby in peace because most of them are, uh, 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 babies are adopt, uh, uh, aborted and a lot of um, girls die in the process because um, they bring in quack doctors, you know, under very unhygienic uh, um, and crude conditions to evacuate the pregnancy. So most girls don't even make it alive. They, they die in the process. Okay. Um, let me take this on Twitter. Um, he actually says I shouldn't mention his name, but it's coming up with an information that I'm very serious, even a new Romy, I'm telling you this because I serve there and I'm the chairman of my group that do something like NAPTIP. There's still so many flashpoints. He says that uh, you should, the DG should go to, is it Aochi Yuku? She will see one madam that transport ladies every day to abroad. Please don't mention my name. He said that. Yeah, you see, this is what we are talking about. He should call NAPTIP and give us the name of the madam and the phone number or the address and not for NAPTIP to go and see what is going on. He's there. You see, this is what I've been talking about. When you see something, you need to say something. Give us the information. We are ready to work with the information. He is there. He knows the madam. Give us the madam's address, the madam's name, the madam's phone number, and the NAPTIP officials in the Benin office will go there. Okay. Um, let's quickly put those numbers on the screen uh, for uh, uh, viewers the numbers to call if you see something say something please okay those are the numbers on the screen right now Enugu Uyo and Co uh, please do call those uh, numbers for the person that just tweeted me uh, please call those numbers all right I'm uh, moving ahead the ambassador says please can you ask your guest their hotlines or email address that works 24 7 because I have once boarded a bus laden with young girls and guys going to Libya all the way from Onicha to Kano Wow. The ambassador, those numbers are on the screen right now. All right, let's take a few other messages. Nancy, Nigerian youths do not believe anything positive is still going on in this country, but looting and government insensitivity based on bad news. The news the, based on bad news, the newspapers churn out daily. The government intervention to them is political propaganda. I made many register for NPAR. They were reluctant. Telvin says, the problem is not Nigeria, but parents. Young people need a reorientation. Poverty is not the cause. A real, what, what, what role do parents have to play in all of this? Well, you see, the truth is that if the parents themselves are not enlightened, then they cannot give their children any useful information. And that is why NAPTIP is also carrying out programs with parents. You know, the community leaders, the youth leaders, the women leaders, market women leaders. We tell them, talk to the parents. Tell them there is nothing happening abroad. The children should stay here and be useful to themselves you, and think, to the country. Uh, do you think their parents are now handicapped uh, in terms of even dealing with their children, as it were? Because there are some parents that you can't even talk to your children anymore. Or your children don't even listen to you. 
what they listen to or what they watch or what they use is the social media, the mobile device in their hands. What they are watching, you see, is pop, sensation, and all of that. So hasn't it overwhelmed parents? Well, that's a different ball game where your children don't listen to you. That's a different thing altogether. But where if parents think that life is better in Europe, and you support your child to sell your belongings, your wrappers, your jewelry to send your child out. It's a different ball game. Mm. So those are the parents we are talking about. There is nothing in Europe. Nigeria is the place to be. And of course, I mean, even if your child doesn't listen to you, you still advise your child, isn't it? Yeah. So if the parents whose children do not listen to them say, please don't go abroad, there's a lot of trafficking going on. You will remember your parents yes, told so you. Yes, so. so yeah, it's for the parents to know, you know, what to do. What's your relationship with the foreign ministry? Because they have a lot to do. I've also gotten stories that Nigerian missions abroad do not really help Nigerians over there in diaspora. Well, what we do, like what I just did, I just got back from the UK. Um, every country we find ourselves with the ambassador or the, uh, um, the high commissioner and um, the staff of the embassy. And then we, we, we tell them what is expected of them, especially as regards irregular migrants and victims of trafficking. So unfortunately, most of them know what to do. But as usual, the problem is funding. And they are handicapped. And now I've said to them, you do not, you do not need to worry about repatriation because it's an expensive exercise the federal government is taking it up so all you need to do is to call NAPTIP and we'll take it from there okay yeah i would i would want you to comment on the issue of even domestic services here in the country what we call house helps uh, because th there's also the business going on that if you need domestic helps you have like agencies you can call or someone that is in charge that will bring you a help and you pay the person as it were it, I, w I want you to talk to me about Please, that. Please, if you know any of those ag agencies, give me their numbers and I will arrest all of them. You know, a lot of ignorance is going on in this country. How do you employ a house help or a cook and you're paying the monies to somebody else? If you're a so-called agent, an agent only gets his fees and it's a one-off payment. But when you, keep, when you start paying the salaries of your workers to a so-called agent on a monthly basis, then he is a trafficker and he must be arrested and prosecuted. So every, every woman or man should know if you have a worker, you must pay the salary to your staff and not to directly. an agent. Be directly to your staff. Those agents are all traffickers. Any agent who takes anything more than his agency fees, which is not one of, is a trafficker and must be reported to NAPTIB for prosecution. How about, what is the age of a domestic help? Because you go to some houses, you see children of 10, 11, helping the uh, women. Un unfortunately, in Nigeria, the age of the, uh, uh, of the domestic help is from 13 upwards, and we're trying to change that law because personally, I believe a, uh, a helper shouldn't be, be, be less than 18 years old. So we are trying to change that law. But anything under 13 downwards is uh, a clear case of human trafficking. Okay, we have two minutes to the end of the show. Let's take a comment a coming through. Uh, Alani said, what if such traffickers are arrested and later got billed? Uh, are there any uh, forms of convictions that we've seen? Oh, yes. Um, have people been arrested Oh, and yeah. We've, we've arrested a lot and jailed a lot. I mean, so far, we've, convict, we've got about 335 convictions. We have over 100 cases as we speak now being prosecuted in various courts. And uh, more to come as time goes on. Okay. Uh, Godwin says, I think we should begin by speaking more Pidgin English when reaching to these people because 80% of them can't even read or, or write. Okay. Uh, taking more comments. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, there are a lot. There are a lot. Public awareness is very key to reducing human trafficking. Mm -hmm. NAPTIP Nigeria can also involve celebrities in their campaign. Are you doing on, on any of that for those that have... Uh, it's a well, circle of influence. Well, you, you see, the truth is that, and I'll say it here, the truth is that um, this is a moral duty that, I mean, everyone in Nigeria should be involved. You know, it's, it's not a government thing. It's all of society, all of government. I expect the celebrities to come out and work with NAPTIP and uh, not to expect to be paid to, 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 to create awareness, you know. So, of course, we are ready to work with as many celebrities that are interested in working with us. All right. I think we'll leave it at that. Many thanks for joining me today. I have the red card, isn't it? On yes. Sunday that I went to speak, I got to know of this red yes. card. <laughs> so, red card, isn't it? Yeah.
that's it. So stop human trafficking, which is a big business worth $150 billion in counting worldwide. Thank you very much for joining me. Thank you so much. All right, I've been speaking with Julie Oka Donley, the Director General at National Agency for the Prohibition of Trafficking in Persons, NAPTIP. Uh, you're having cold, but you also have to come. <laughs> I'm also having cold. We're both on that is Hamatan weather. But thank you all for joining us today on the program. Please join us again next week. Don't forget what we've said, public awareness. If you see something, say something. The numbers have been put on screen. If there are flashpoints, please do let NAPTIP know. We've got to stop this. And for those of you that get involved with domestic helps, you know what to do right now, not less than 18, and pay directly their salaries to them. I'll join you all next week, Monday, God willing. Many thanks for your tweets, comments, and questions. Be the best you can be and be the change that you want to see. I am Nancy Najib. Bye now. <laughs>